Okay, very good. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, George is joining us from Dallas, Texas this morning. He, I'm so glad that, that you're on, George. Hope you're going to have a wonderful weekend down there in the Big D. So today, I want to talk to you about some fun stories from my past and uh, kind of relate them to selling real estate. So you, I'm going to switch here to sharing my screen and get some slides up. Okay, I need you, Russ. What's happening? Okay. Really, this is not going to work. Please, I don't need to share Zoom audio. There we go. Slideshow. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to take you back to the 70s. So um, back in the 70s, I'm a child of the 70s, and I actually thought you might get a kick out of this. I drove a gremlin. That's a picture of the car that I drove in the 70s. And that was my hairstyle, had the page boy haircut going. Um, we had a rotary dial phone at my house that I grew up in. And uh, hopefully you can see John Travolta over there in the corner as well. I was the disco queen when I went to college, had so much fun dancing disco. Um, so I, I went to college at BYU, which I know just makes George so happy that I graduated from that wonderful university. It's really his favorite institution in the state of Utah. Um, so that's where I went to school. And you may not know this about me, but I began as a student of theater. And my goal was to become a high school drama coach. That's what I wanted to do. But I, I loved theater, I loved acting. And um, here you see pictures of a couple of famous actors who also graduated from Brigham Young University, Aaron Eckhart, and of course, the famous John Heater from Napoleon Dynamite. So um, they, they also share my alma mater. There on the right, I just wanted to share with you this, this kind of funny story. While I was at BYU, since we talk a lot in real estate about dressing for success, it reminded me of this story. Um, they had a rule back in the 70s that you couldn't, that women couldn't wear pants to the testing center. You had to wear a dress. And in fact, you had to wear a dress a lot on campus back in the 70s. But um, a young woman walked into the testing center to take a final and she was wearing pants and they wouldn't allow her to take the final. So she went into the bathroom, removed her pants and put her trench coat on and went back to the testing center and was allowed to take the test in her coat. Nobody knew that she had taken off her clothes underneath, which was kind of funny in this big scandal about, about that. And it became this hilarious meme. Well, back then we didn't have memes, but um, it, this cartoon was drawn and everybody just, just loved this. So I thought I would share that with you as we talk about dressing for success as a realtor today a little bit. Uh, you can remember that funny story. So that was the setting back in the 70s. And um, so I want to share with you some of the things that I learned on the stage that I think would be very helpful to you in your real estate career. You know, people often say that life is a stage, but I really found a lot of parallels between selling real estate and preparing for your big important role as a successful realtor. Um, I found parallels between auditioning for roles on the stage and auditioning for the role of a realtor with your clients. So that's how I'd like to focus my remarks to you today. First of all, one of my favorite actors, um, I hope he is on. Do we have, do we have um, Allison Bourne on? If not, we can come back. Okay, she's on. She says she's on. So I want to introduce you to my grandson, Grayson Bourne. What's the name? Okay, Allie, if you could text me the name on your phone. Does it say Allison anywhere? Do you see Allison? Allie's iPhone? Does it just say iPhone? Okay, maybe it just says iPhone. A few technical difficulties here, forgive me. 
she texted that she's on, but um, Allison, is your video turned on? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go here and see if I can find her. Oh, Grayson is better? No, is that it? Oh, there he is. Okay, see where it says Grayson is better? Do I have to unmute him or do you? Okay, Grayson, can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hi, Grayson. I'm so happy to have you with us today. There are a lot of people listening and I wanted to share with them um, your incredible story. So Grayson actually practices affirmations. He learned this from his mother who learned it from me, which was really fun. And I thought this would really delight all of you. So um, Grayson, can you tell us about the experience that you had when, when you wanted to audition for a play and how you used affirmations to help you? Yeah. So one time at school, they were going to have a play, Mary Poppins, and I was super excited for it. I had never done a play before, and I just kind of wanted to do it. And then I really wanted to get a lead role in the play. So then when I got home, I started walking around the house saying, I'm so happy that I got a lead in Mary Poppins. I'm so happy that I got a lead in Mary Poppins. I'm so happy that I got a lead in Mary Poppins. And then after that, when we when there was the board that set, that showed everyone who got parts and it showed their names and what part they got, I didn't even get to see it. I was walking home with my friend because I was going to his house and then someone told me that I had gotten Michael and I was so happy <laughs> and I was like, yes! That's awesome, Grayson. So then, then did you use affirmations again for something else that was important to you? Yes. Also, when I wanted to get in something called Harry Potter Club at my school, it's a club where we just get to make a lot of fun stuff about Harry Potter. And I really like Harry Potter, so I really wanted to get into the club. And I was finally in the grade that people can get in the club. So then I also said, once I filled out the form and gave it to the people, that I kept saying, I'm so happy that I got into Harry Potter Club. I'm so happy that I got into Harry Potter Club. I'm so happy that I got into Harry Potter Club. And then I got in. That is wonderful, Grayson. You you were a wonderful actor. It was so fun to fly to Dallas and see you in that play. And I love you so much. And thank you for sharing with us today and setting such a great example of positive affirmations. Thanks, Grayson. Bye. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so we need to say our affirmations every day. So what, when, you're, um, when you're preparing for this role, and now I don't know what's happening, but I can't advance my screen. I'm so glad you're here, Russ. Okay, so this is you guys, your name in lights as an award-winning realtor. Okay, that's the role that you are auditioning for. So let's talk about some of the things that you do. In addition to getting your mindset right, like Grayson just showed us, like before you even audition for the role and go to that listing presentation, you need to start telling yourself, I'm so glad I got this listing, okay? Um, so, so the first story I wanna tell you is the importance of doing your homework to prepare for your role as an award-winning realtor. Um, so this is a picture of BYU again, and this was one of my most difficult professors, Dr. Charles Whitman. I stalked him on Facebook and found this picture, and he looks so much more kind and gentle than he was back in the day. But back in the day, he was this gruff old theater person who was not a lot of fun, and he was really hard on people, and, and it was really hard to get a good grade in his class. So the, the semester that I had Dr. Whitman, for the final, he got to choose the scene that you had to do in front of the class. He got to cast everyone in their roles. Now you have to understand that before this, I was just so comfortable 
always playing the same role every time I was on the stage. I loved being the little, you know, romantic lead, the sweet little girl next door. Those kind of roles are the roles that I had played. And um, he interviewed us all and he pulled me out into the hall for, an in for my interview to give me a critique. And he said to me, Danette, you are very talented, but you don't work very hard. And you're not always going to get by in life with your smile. So I'm going to challenge you because if you don't stretch yourself, then you're, you're not going to grow and your talent's not going to develop. So I'm really going to challenge you. And I'm going to give you the role for your final of Stephen Sondheim, The Ladies Who Lunch. Okay, so this role was a middle-aged drunken woman. It was so far beyond my comfort zone. I, I was hysterically upset about this. I thought he hated me. I thought that I was going to fail miserably. I thought I could never play the role of a drunken middle-aged woman when I had never had a taste of alcohol in my life. And it, it was nothing like who I was or wanted to be. So at first I, th I thought he hated me and then I got really mad and I thought I was going to show him because I thought he was trying to show everyone that I couldn't do this role. But I rose to the occasion. I worked so hard and I stretched myself and I performed brilliantly because of the hard work that I put in and I got a really good grade in his class and that, that felt better to me than all the times that I had just played the same old role over and over, even though I had played it to, to perfection and felt really good about my performance, nothing felt as good as going beyond my comfort zone, learning new skills, digging really deep, and performing in a whole new role. So I want you to think about that. Do you show up as the same realtor for every single appointment? Because guess what? Casting isn't about you, it's about the director and what they want in that role. And in our profession, the director is actually our client, the seller and or the buyer. And they have in their mind before we show up, I mean, they're basically holding a casting call, right? They are interviewing several agents and they have in their mind who they want to cast in this role. And they have a list of things that they feel like they need or that they feel like you should be. And so the key is to figure out what the director wants and try to um, become that person and fulfill that role for them. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be fake. It means you stretch and you're versatile. Lindsay talks a lot about versatility and how important it is. You can't just show up as the same person every time and expect to have a, a wide range of um, business you're probably just going to book with the same people each time. But if you can stretch and become more versatile and have more tools um, to use with these clients, then you'll get more listings, which is really exciting. As an example, think about Meryl Streep and Jennifer Aniston. In every role that Jennifer Aniston plays, I'm sorry, but she's the same person. She's Jennifer Aniston every time she shows up. But you look at Meryl Streep and her versatility and who really has an opportunity to, um, to land greater roles and have more experience and um, do more movies. It's Meryl Streep and, and she's more critically acclaimed and respected because of her um, craft and how she has worked so hard to become a professional. So that's who I'd like us to think about as we pattern ourselves um, and grow in our roles as realtors um, we think of Meryl Streep and her versatility and the depth that she brings to the role and, and her experience and her hard work and her training. That's what, that's what we have to do too. Okay, the second thing besides um, doing your homework and being versatile, kind of just going back to that doing your homework thing though. I mean, that's, that's another interesting thing I learned when I went back to school um, to get my degree in communications and PR. I, I got an associate degree first and then I went back and switched fields and got my degree in PR and communication. And it was so amazing to me what a difference it made to, to do my homework. As a freshman at BYU, I didn't get good grades. But as an adult um, who was disciplined, I, I got straight A's. I, I think I only got, anyway, I'm not bragging, but I kind of am because I was really proud. Even in, even in things like accounting that I thought, I, my story had always been I'm not good at math, but guess what? 
I did accounting and I rocked it at a school that was ranked like third in the nation for accounting. Um, and it's because oh. I showed up yeah. and I did my homework. Is somebody talking trash? Yeah, George. George, are you talking trash? I'm <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so it's really important to do your homework and to show up. Okay, so the second thing, memorize your lines and cues. Could you imagine a director hiring Meryl Streep and just telling her to walk out before the camera and say whatever she wanted to. George is saying this all the time to us when he talks about actors and actresses who get roles in movies and how important the script is and how important their interpretation of the character and the lines are, okay, how they speak, how they show up. There's something called stage presence, right? We need to go into our appointments with that kind of stage presence where we walk into the room and we take a commanding role. So um, I still have a recurring nightmare that it's opening night in a play and I run on stage, I'm on stage I mean, and I haven't rehearsed and I don't know the script and I don't know my, my lines. That's the most terrifying feeling in the world for me. Um, so memorizing your scripts and I think the other important part is the cues, right? So when you're memorizing a script in a play or a movie, somebody gives you the cue, which is the end of the line before the line you speak. And so if you can really memorize, you probably hear the same things over and over from your clients. And so if you can just memorize your response so that when you hear that cue, you know exactly what you're going to say and you don't have to fumble through it, um, that, that will really help you. And some people have a hard time with memorization. And um, we used to say when we were memorizing scripts, you know, the first thing that you do is you start reading it over and over and over aloud. Like if you can just read it aloud even 10 to 20 times and then test yourself and see how much of it you have memorized, um, you'll, you'll be surprised how quickly you can pick it up. There's a difference between, you know, we wouldn't expect actors to walk on the stage reading a script. They have it memorized and internalized, right? So that it becomes their own words and they can say it with their own emotion and inflection. And, and that's what we need to do with our scripts as well. We need to own them and internalize them after we memorize them. But first you have to know what the, what the lines are. Okay? So, um, you know, when you're going to central casting for a realtor, there's probably nobody more entertaining than Phil Dunphy. So I just want to take a little break here, show you a little video about Phil Dunphy. And my technical support team is going to cue this up for us right now. What does it take to make a great salesman? It's no big secret. You just follow the ABCs of salesmanship. Always be closing. Don't ever forget great home ideas. Just keep lurking mostly nearby. Often people question realtors' sincerity. Take umbrage. Violators will... Oh, shoot. Did I say so? And this is the great room, although great hardly seems to do a room like this justice. Weird, squiggly painting not included. I actually love it. I do too. It's really beautiful. Um, all, all custom built-ins, and you'll notice just, just tons of natural light, so that's great. Did I need the sale? Yes. Was I worried? No. Why? Because. Because why? Because I won't sell anything I don't believe in. And when I believe, you believe. I can sell a fur coat to an Eskimo. Yeah, Phil, I'm sorry. It's a beautiful house. But I'm just not sure how kid-friendly it is. And we have two small children. I mean, these stairs Dad, alone. This place is awesome. No, no, Luke. Did you see the backyard? It's got room for like 10 tree asses. And the bedroom's got a window on the ceiling. I wish we could live here. I wish you'd go back out to the patio. Do where... you really? Oh, yeah. Our house sucks compared to this one. It really does. <laughs> Hey, titans of residential real estate. That's right, I'm talking to you, Sandy Brewster, Skip Woosnam, J.J. McCubbin. Hear those footsteps? That's Luke Dunphy, and he's gonna drink your milkshake. That's... Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. But it's, it's funny because people really do kind of have something, in, you know, in their minds about realtors, right? They stereotype us and um, they make fun of us on TV or whatever. But uh, when you show up, now we're gonna talk about how you show up when you get to that listing after you have memorized your scripts and cues and you have done your homework. Okay, so um, maybe some of you who are chatting here, maybe tell me kind of what types of homework you do to prepare 
for your role as a, as a listing agent? Can you just type in there a little bit? Like, I hope that you really know the market, right? Because if I'm casting for that role, I would expect, I would kind of drop a whole character, right? A whole character sketch of what I would expect in a realtor. Professionalism, market knowledge would be huge, right? So maybe you can share with, with, uh, with us in the chat box, some of you, what you do to prepare, what kinds of homework you do to give you that added depth so that you're more like a Meryl Streep than a Jennifer Aniston. But we all love Jennifer Aniston, don't get me wrong. She just doesn't have a lot of depth in her roles. Okay, so now where did my, where did my list go? What do I need to do? Reshare my screen, thank you. Okay, oh, so now I lost it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Don't I? What's happening? I have that little swirling beach ball. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. I'm going to owe Russ lunch or something. Okay, so you've memorized your lines and cues. You've done your homework. You are ready for your performance. Right, there are some important things that you need to do to, to just before you go to your listing appointment. And actors and actresses, you know, do all kinds of warm ups. They do physical warm ups to get loose before they go on stage. And they do vocal warm ups, which people like to make fun of. But you know what? Your voice is your instrument, and it's, it's the way that you're going to communicate with your buyers and sellers. And you want to make sure your voice is really warmed up. So I would just do a few little drills to warm your voice up if, if, before you go into a listing appointment. Um, you need to warm up mentally, right? You need to review your lines. You need to do your affirmations like Grayson showed us um, and, and get, in, get into character, get ready, get in, you know, to posture, to be that successful real estate agent who's going to take that listing. And then it's time, lights, camera, action, you're ready, it's showtime. One of the most important things that you need to bring to the table, George talks about this all the time, okay? So you can do all the homework in the world in terms of preparing great marketing pieces. And I love beautiful marketing pieces, as you know. But the most important thing you're gonna bring to the table is yourself, okay? So if I walk into an audition for a play, my resume is one thing, but it's when I walk out on the stage and what I deliver that makes all the difference. It's the same thing with you. When you walk into that home, that is your stage. And when you walk in, it's how you deliver. It's the energy and emotion that you bring that will make the difference in you securing the job. And the, the really crazy thing, and maybe a lot of you know this, is we only have seven seconds to make a good first impression. Seven seconds, that's what the experts say. So as you're making that entrance, unfortunately, it's true, but they say ultimately, the first two things people are gonna notice when they meet you are the way you're dressed and your body language. Now, not all of us have movie star looks like Jennifer Aniston, but we can still walk into a room with the kind of presence that makes a difference. I'm sure you've seen people walk on stage or on the screen that might not be the most beautiful or attractive, but still the way that they're dressed, they're in costume, the way they're carrying themselves makes a difference. And you believe the role because of that. So that's how you need to look at your career as well. You need to think about what kind of costume you're wearing and what would the costume of a successful real estate agent be and um, dress appropriately and when you make your entrance, make sure that you have that energy and emotion to connect with, um, with your seller or your buyer. And going back to the versatility thing, you know, um, that's, that's really important. Like you kind of have to research what do they want for this role, right? So if I were auditioning for a role, I would think, what is the director really looking for in this role? And that's how I would show up, right? So if they were looking for that middle-aged drunken woman and I showed up as the 18 year old, you know, ingenue, I'm not going to get the part. Right. So it doesn't matter what I think or how great my performance is. If that's not what the director's looking for, I'm not going to land, land the role. So, um, I can remember one time when, when I had to, uh, speak 
at the funeral of, of a really dear friend. And this taught me a really good lesson. Um, <clears throat> so I was really worried about speaking in public and talking at this funeral because I was worried that I would just, you know, break into tears and just get really upset and, and that I wouldn't be able to speak. And then I was worried that what if I didn't cry and people didn't think I loved her because I didn't cry, like all these things were going through my head. And then I had this really incredible spiritual experience where I heard her voice say to me, this isn't about you, it's about me. So just get up there and talk about me and stop thinking about yourself. And that, that rings in my head all of the time. So that's exactly what I did. I forgot about myself. So even though I'm telling you, you need to make an entrance and you need to dress the part and you need to show up the right way. Ultimately, when you get through the door, it's not about you anymore. It's about them and what they need. And once I switched into that mindset and made it about my friend and honoring her and speaking about her and forgetting about myself and how I was perceived, then actually it wasn't a performance, so to speak, but I did a really, I did really well and in honoring her. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you will show up for your clients, you will ultimately give a great performance. I hate to use that word because it sounds like we're trying to be fake, but you know what I'm trying to say. You will perform well if you're thinking in terms of what they need and not worrying so much about yourself. And the way that you're able to do that is that you prepare well so that that script is just part of who you are so that then you can take the focus off of what you're going to say next or what you're going to do and put the focus back on your client and what their needs are and what they're looking for in you to fulfill this role. Okay. I didn't have another slide at the end. We'll switch it kind of back to you. So that's all I had for you today. Um, and yeah, that's about the right time, right, Russ? So Russ, are you really going to make me do the closing yes. affirmations? Okay, first I have to tell everybody, am I still sharing? Yes. No. I'm not sharing my screen good, but I'm still on, right? Okay, but first, before we go to the affirmations, I wanted to share this, this last little thought, okay? Um, so... It's, you know, it's a horrific feeling when you're not prepared. So I just want to talk to you for just a moment about preparation and how that can take fear out of a performance. So when I was in high school, I played the piano very, not very well, but I, I played a little bit. And I got asked to play the piano for my high school graduation. And when I got up there, even though I thought I had practiced well enough, I didn't have the song memorized. So I had to rely on the sheet music. Even though I practiced, I was still relying on the sheet music. And I got up there and my hands started shaking so badly that I was having a hard time playing the notes. And then I was so upset that I started crying and then I couldn't see the page anymore. I couldn't see the notes. And it was like the most horrific experience of my life, which is why I wanted Russ to do the affirmations at the beginning, and he's gonna make me do them now because I don't have them memorized. And so I'm afraid I'm gonna trip over my words. So I hope that you'll forgive me for that and that you'll be shouting them loudly enough that it won't matter. Anyway, I hope that you go out there and you land your role as award-winning realtor and you become versatile so that you can get more, more deals. Thank you so much. Okay.